What's up, folks? So, you know, I'm about to discuss this new documentary that's on Showtime right now. And it's Basketball County, Something in the Water, a documentary brought to you by Kevin Durant, a native of the PG County DMV area, uh, which basically highlights PG County, the DMV, um, and just the essence of basketball, you know, being deriving and creating tremendous amount of talent from out of this area. And I also feel like I need to make this clear for some of you guys really quick. DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. That is the DC area. That is Northern Virginia. And that is certain counties within PG County. Just to name a few really quick PG County, Montgomery County, places where the Metro train goes to. Just to make that very clear, the home of some of the best athletic talent and all over the world um, comes from this area. And this documentary is just highlighting and focusing on a lot of the basketball talent that has come out of this area. Keyword a lot because not all, because there's still a ton of people that could have had um, tidbits on here that played a significant role in each and every one of these people's career. So I just want to make sure that that's very clear for everybody right now. And I, you know, ever since I seen the trailer, I, was, I knew I had to watch this. I actually thought it came out today, but it actually came out yesterday. So I'm like a little bit behind on getting this review out. But nonetheless, man, that was, that was, that was dope. That was definitely dope. First thing I got to say is I am a PG County DMV native, a hundred percent. So like hearing these stories. So, so the first thing I liked about this is that, you know, um, I grew up. You know, I'm around the same age as most of these people. So I either grew up watching them. I either grew up around people I know who played with them. Some of my closest friends, you know, um, have played with or against uh, some of these guys. And, you know, hearing the stories, hearing the stories growing up, being a witness to some of these stories, encompassing the history of everything, how this all came together. This was great. And I can't even believe they got it down to the time they got it down to because this could have extended beyond. There's so many other things that haven't even been highlighted. Like, yes, they hit the AAU scene. They hit the high school scene. They hit the people on the national scene. You know, they went, they touched on Gogo for a little bit. But, like, they didn't touch on the food. They didn't touch, man, if they would have touched on, you know, the, the, the clothing lines that came out of this area, local sponsorships and stuff like that, this thing could have went forever. Forever, forever, forever. Um, but I absolutely love. Um, I, I this was this was dope. Um, you know, within the first minute, I see my high school being highlighted, so that's that was pretty cool. But you know, being a being a PG County native, it is really it's it's truly something unique because much like they say in the documentary, when you see somebody from home, you just know it. I was in Hawaii a couple of months ago. And I seen somebody, it was like looking at each other. It was like, where are you from? Just like they highlighted in the documentary. It's so legit to the T. You just know when you know somebody's from back home. So like the authentic, the authenticity of it uh, was was really dope. And it really speaks fire to everyone who grows up in this area. And they and like they said, it's like this mystique. It's like this thing that you just, you don't, you, you know, but it's like hard to explain. So it's kind of cool to see them being able to kind of like showcase this and blueprint it for people to kind of like bring people in within the culture. Um, but the one thing I really want to talk about really, really quick before I kind of go over my notes is that Mike Beasley... I really appreciated his 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 um his his viewpoint and like his commentary of everything because Mike Beasley for me represents that raw you know that 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 raw knowledge of what this county embraces and and I think if he was even to have his own thing we'll get so many more stories because you know typically like I said from the people I either grew up with or around, or, or whatever it may be, who even played with these people, or friends with these people, whatever it is, the type of conversations Mike Beasley is having is the type of conversation I've been hearing for the years. So, like, I, I appreciate that. And, again, it's like barbershop top to its finest, and it could just extend, extend, extend. Um, where, you know, Kevin Durant, you know, obviously because his documentary took more of the of the the more of the documentary style of conversations really encompassing making sure every, every all the all everybody's being touched on uh bringing the history on it and everything like that so i really do like the dynamics of bringing in the two of those together to really putting together um a good documentary for all viewers uh but 
the one thing I really say is like I really need I never even realized how spoiled we were for PG County to have so many rec centers and parks all over the place. That is true. Everywhere you go, there's a park. There's a park right across the street from my house right now. So like there's literally um you know the resources are definitely there for people and like they said like basketball was just life i i did not play basketball at any level of profession but i was in the backyard each and every day with my boys and we played like it was our last regardless of how you look and you know as good as we you know us our, our, the low tier people felt we were we seen these stars blooming from day one they just you know continue to flourish and flourish and flourish and it was just no mistake that certain people were going to make it to the league and some people that didn't make it to the league um that should have made it to the league they're still legends in this area and you know again as much as the m many people that they highlight there's so many more people they could have talked about you know uh whether it's just because of you know, they're just local legends or, you know, some people that who did make it to the national level also ran into trouble. So, you know, with that being said, this documentary did truly focus on the positivity of things. And although they highlighted, you know, about the influence of drugs in this area and, you know, some tragedy and stuff like that. Um, they really did keep this in a really positive uh, focus now. And another thing, big that I mean, sure they talked about the Drew League and the farms, but like I don't think you guys understand like what was going down in the farms. Like people like to give up north and Rucker Park all the recognition of you know of, of basketball and outside tournaments and stuff. But the farms, Berry Farms, it, it went down. It went down. I mean, you had NBA players coming down there getting buckets, giving buckets. Like it was, it was, it was, it it was legit, and it was a thing. It was, it was part of the culture, something that you know people went to go watch each and every week. It was just, it it was just like that. Um, I I you know I thought it was um uh, cool being able for them to highlight like um, run and shoot. My high school had problems with the gym at a point. Um, so because they weren't able to play games in the gym at us for a couple of years. We actually ran our basketball games at run and shoot. So run and shoot was just not only just something that everyone did for, you know, for leisure, practice, whatever it may be. But it was it was our home for our basketball team. Um, so, you know, we were in there each there all the time. And, you know, people were spending the night. Some of these ballers were there 24 hours, man, trying to get that work in. So like run and shoot meant everything to this area. And, you know, you go out there. And you'll just be playing with your boys, but you look across and you you never know who may walk in. And like some real games, some real competitive games went on then there. And like, you know, I didn't grow up in the social media area. So there's not like a ton of footage, especially nothing on social media of all these things that went down. But the stories are there for 100 percent. It is it's a it, it, um, it, it went down without a doubt. Uh, they, they talked about the math that the math is still a powerhouse school <laughs> you know even since like they say even since the day they gave cream of the L, ale you know the math is still doing this thing it, it is no mistaken about that um but i also thought it was interesting i, I had no idea that the mlk assassination you know obviously i knew about the rise in dc but i never knew that was ultimately the result of a lot of african americans moving out of dc moving into the county and with basketball being brought back into D.C. now having to be out, so sort of say, to the county, that's really what bred all this talent to really start flourishing from over the years. So I, I, I really did appreciate that knowledge right there. Every time I hear about Lynn Bias, I just, it's just hard to think, like, the possibilities. Like, and I can easily say this, that if Lynn Bias with Larry Bird on the Celtics, if that would have went down, that Jordan documentary, that's you know it's coming out each and every week probably wouldn't be a thing surely wouldn't be that, that many parts if it was a thing um because you know he was he was our prodigy son in this area everyone knew about him and he, he was he was he was the hero that was going to come out it's just sad you know tragic events it's, it's sad but at the same time um you know his passing it fueled other people because other everyone else wanted to step up at that so um but you know even for being 30 something years later Limbias is always always gonna be a conversation within this area you're never gonna get away from that um 
As much as I said I wasn't a baller but was around the ballers, I, I surely was in that go-go scene. So when they started talking about, you know, what go-go did for this area and what does it mean for the people in this area, hey, I know all about that. And Beasley is right. You go in there, it is, it's it's crazy. It's And that's an understatement. But, you know, even some of my friends now, we still, it's, it's not a day that we can go by without talking about something with the go-go scene and just the music period because it's just the official sound of D.C., and the DMV, and you know, it's in our DNA, that's what we know. So, you know, when you hear it, it just does something to you, it moves you. It's like a spirit when when you when you hear it, when you hear that song, man. So, Go Go is um, it, it was cool that they highlighted that as well. Uh, Curtis Malone, you know, he did a lot of good for the youth, and although he's you know, he's, he's serving a felony sentence right now, uh, the proof is in the pudding for me, you know, despite what he did, talent was definitely came from under his tutelage and they you know were away from drugs they made it to the highest stages possible so the guy did a lot of good regardless of his own personal choices so you know i i, I definitely appreciated that they highlighted that in the way they highlighted as well too keeping things positive um but you know the ultimate case of this documentary is that there's so many sacrifices made from everybody on all levels from parents coaches um, just everything you seeing how people had to live with other people and just it's just a lot of good testimony of sacrifices that it really is powerful and inspiring and um, it, it, it's moving nonetheless um, my last two things I'm gonna say is that you know um, they, they they showcase Navarro Bowman who's you know played for the, the, the 49ers and so on uh, football player I believe he probably played basketball as well too uh, back in high school I can't remember right now but there's a lot of people Believe it or not, there's a lot of two, three sport athletes that also could have been highlighted in this. And, you know, ultimately their career may have landed somewhere else of basketball. But I'm just trying to tell you, when it comes down to sports in this area, it is ridiculous. And it's, you know, it's the, it's the conversations I always like to have when I'm around, you know, certain people. It's just like, yo, do you ever realize, like, how many people really came from this area? And then this documentary surely, surely gave you a sample dose of it because it's so so many people like i said if some people made it to the highest level and some people are just uh local legends but nonetheless the talent is here and when i say local legends let it be known that these people will give any of these people around the country some buckets because it's just in their dna imagine just think about this imagine these people who had to, who's the same age as people like durant and beasley who had to play against them for years you don't think they're just as good <laughs> They may not have had the full passion. They may not have had the backing and support. But these dudes can go out there and still get buckets as well. So, But the one last thing I'm going to say is that the fact remains the same for me. All this time that comes from this area and Maryland, University of Maryland recruitment is trash. Because almost no one went there. So that's all I got to say. But look, again, Basketball Country in the Water is available now on Showtime for you to stream. Um, I think it's a dope documentary. And, you know, I'm glad that they put um, some uh, a spotlight and attention on what's already should already be a household name to you guys. And that's the DMV and what PG County does uh, for the athletic scene. So, but yeah, until my next review, everybody, stay tuned, stay safe, and catch you then.